Okay, super. Um, so my name is Craig Hawker and I'm Director of the Materials Research Laboratory at UC Santa Barbara. And in a nutshell, the Materials Research Laboratory is the central nexus on campus and actually, in fact, for most of Southern California, for some of the most uh, appropriate and long-looking um, research in the materials area. And so we provide a real infrastructure and support environment for conducting cutting-edge research. Uh, we have been, again, pioneers at the MRL in gallium nitride, and that excellence has allowed us to attract people like Shuji Nakamura to the campus to really push our solid-state lighting effort to a next level. And at the MRL at the moment, we are looking into going beyond gallium nitride into oxide-based systems. And again, if we look at the gallium nitride, uh, collaborations initially between academics spun off into a company that has been acquired now by Cree, and we envisage and are starting to build towards the same level of success with the oxides as replacements for gallium nitrides in the solid state lighting and energy um, area in the future. How that changes and affects your life, I could speak for an hour on this. The cost savings alone from replacing incandescent and fluorescent tubes by solid state lighting is enormous. You know, you can cut your reliance on foreign oil by up to 25% by simply changing all of the lighting in houses as well as in businesses. From a social viewpoint, it has an impact on many different levels. It, I think, very much encourages students to appreciate science and engineering and what impact they, it can have on people's lives. But also from a geopolitical viewpoint, not being reliant on fossil reserves that are in potentially uh, unstable parts of the world is also a very, very useful thing. So we've developed over the last number of years this technique called block copolymer lithography, which is a very cheap self-assembling technique to make feature sizes less than 20 nanometers, and in most cases around about 10 nanometers. This technology has actually been really very successful for such a young technology, and IBM recently announced that all of their chips starting in 2009 will be made using block copolymer lithography as a essential step to create what are called air gap um, dielectric constant materials. And so this technology really relies on the block copolymer and the cheapness and the versatility to allow them to make these really low dielectric constant air gap um, uh, situations. We're developing materials to encapsulate the gallium nitride semiconductors. Um, because the gallium nitride emits in the near UV, they're very high energy systems and so we have to design the encapsulants to really stand up to the high energy that the gallium nitride semiconductors emit. And so that's a real challenge, and we've actually made a lot of progress in that area. When we look at the future, we need to go from a two-dimensional recording technology, such as a hard disk drive or a CD, into the third dimension, so that we can get a huge increase in storage capacity. And that's where holography comes in. And so we've got a fairly large program in developing new materials for holographic storage, that has the potential to increase the storage capacity, for example, of a D DVD by 10 to 100 times. And so again, if we can do that, it has a big impact not only socially, but also from an industrial viewpoint. I run my group in very much team-based environments. I really like working in a team, and so many, so you'll have groups of three or four students that are working on common problems. I think that's actually very successful because it gets the students to encourage each other and to support each other, but it also allows the students to leave graduate school with a much broader um, CV, and by that I mean broader in terms of experience, but also broader in terms of the number of publications they have and the number of projects they work on. The way that I like to think of it is by working in a team, you leverage your single pair of hands into multiple pairs of hands. I really like to send my students to other groups for experiences that are above and beyond what they'll get both at UCSB 
as well as in my group. And I also tend to collaborate with some of the best groups in the world. And again, it's good for us because then we get to see what cutting edge research is like in different areas. Just as one example, we do a lot of polymer synthesis and that synthesis is based on organic chemistry and so we have a really strong collaboration with Barry Sharpless down at the Scripps Institute in developing these new types of chemical transformations that are really economical and Barry won the Nobel Prize in 2001 and so having my students go down and spend time with him in his group is just fantastic they love it and he has a really unique environment down there and probably an environment which is based on the fact that he's a Nobel Prize winner and has some of the best people in the world working for him.